Happy New Year. Happy 2019. I'm a, I'm a little rusty. I'm a little out of shape with vlogging Jurassic World Alive, but um, it's a good little break. I honestly did not do a lot with Jurassic World Alive. I did my battle incubators, strike towers, things of that nature, but not, I didn't grind. How about that? What I want to talk about today, as you can see, I'm back at the park again because I still don't have Tenanto Rex, Tenantosaurus, Tenanto, I don't remember what, it's been that long, but I need Dilophosaurus Gen 2, and I don't have even a hundred, but what I want to talk about for today's video is with the change of a new year, anytime that there's a new year, whether it be 2017 to 2018 or 2018 and 2019, probably 2019 into 2020, people reflect and talk about what could I do better than I did the year before? How can I be a better person? So it's new beginnings. It's an arbitrary day that people decide they want to be better than they were. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you don't have to wait for January 1. I mean, you can make that decision at any point in time. And uh, most people just make it on January 1st. And it works for me. What I want to talk about is one aspect of Jurassic World Alive, which, let's, let's be real, I, I think is a really good game. I think the developers, Ludia, have done a lot right with this game. I think the game is better now than when they launched it, which natural progression would say that if you're doing something right, it will be better the longer it's around. Makes sense, right? But there is one aspect that I feel like could be changed, and neither one of those are Dilophosaurus Gen 2. And I probably should dart one of them, but I'm not. But one thing that I think Ludia could do better is if we go to the battle arena, you see that I'm full. And I have 4828 for my trophies. If it's not my highest level ever for trophies, it, it's close. Like, it's close enough to be in the ballpark. The thing is, I'm pretty close to the max for what my team is able to compete at, or what my skill level with my team is able to compete at. There are probably people who can take my team and make it higher or better. But for me, it, it's kind of maxed out here. And what ends up happening is no matter what your threshold is, whether you are trying to get up to 4,000, 4,500, 4,750, whatever the breakdown is for the current tournament season, which expires in about, I think we can look. If I go to news, it ends in basically five days. What ends up happening, and something I think that they could do better, and they being Ludia, is change up the way trophies and awards are issued. And they've already made one change. Like I remember like season one or two, the leaders were, gosh, I don't even know, like 57 million. <laughs> and I know that it's not really that high, but it was a significant number higher than, than me for sure. And if we go look at the tournament rankings now the leaders are at a more like less comical number 6,000 but what ends up happening is players in my alliance for example and I've been guilty of this before too I think I'm gonna catch this Dilophosaurus Gen 2 real quick because this is why this is why I came here it's been a while since I've darted a Dilophosaurus Gen 2, and uh, I hope that it remains as easy of a target as I remember it. 
And if I can get it to run in the straight line for me, then I should be able to get a relatively large total. So here it is. I think this is about, about halfway through your darting session. It should just start running in a straight line. 335 is, it's an acceptable total for me. That's gonna take me up to 394. I think I need 500 in order to do one fusion. So um, continue walking, hoping to get more of those. And then I'm also gonna head over towards this rare strike tower. So what ends up happening is, say you reach, you grind, you battle, and you reach, we'll just use 4752. Just barely over that 4700 number. What ends up happening is a lot of people stop playing and, and rightfully so because if you feel like the high for your team the max level or near max level for the team that you have is around 4750 then there's no incentive to keep playing in the battle arena other than getting incubators and for a lot of people it's just not worth it they would rather have the guaranteed prizes at the end of the tournament season. They'll just let their incubators run out, do friendly battles, and just not worry anymore about the arena. And that's not really good for the game because, like I showed you guys, I'm at 48 something, and often I'll time out, it'll take forever to find a game, and I'm not even in the top 500. I can't even imagine how bad it is for them. What I would actually like to see implemented that I think would benefit everybody who plays in the battle arenas is a, a couple changes here and uh, I'm just going to start working on this rare strike tower just gonna use my normal team because I don't feel like trying to be creative or thinking about my moves but what I would like to see is we have our battle arena rank and that's my my trophy count if you will but I would also like to see them implement a seasonal rank that resets at the beginning of each season and it could reset to whatever arbitrary number they want it could reset all the way down to zero 1500 it doesn't matter pick a number let's go from there and what what would happen is in my system my my battle system for seasons is your arena rank would set who you compete against so for example, I'm in currently the highest arena. So I would maintain battling people in the highest arena. That wouldn't change. And then the algorithm for winning and losing wouldn't change either. All that stuff would remain the same. Let's see what I get here. Not, not a huge incubator, but some coins, some darts, none to suchus, pasta suchus, and baryonyx. So not too bad at all. But then what would end up happening is your arena rank would be what the tournament season whatever you want to call it prizes were awarded on on top of that does that make sense though so basically what would end up happening is i'm gonna battle this again what would end up happening is you have your two ranks your your battle arena rank decides who you play against and then you have a separate rank which is for the tournament season hope that makes and then it would be on whatever kind of sliding scale or like algorithm for awarding trophies for wins that they decided was best and, and i'm cool with whatever really and then the second proposal that i have the second thing that i would like to change as i realize i'm wasting my incubator here but my uh, scent capsule would be you're rewarded on your highest trophies earned for that that uh that seasonal rank so what i'm thinking is we'll say that the ready to crush huh i don't think so we'll say that for the top i don't know after your top 500 you know, we'll say for 1250. Say that that's one of the breakdown markers. If you reach over 1250, then you earn that award, even if you play and lose, because then your the incentive is there to keep battling. 
and keep trying to progress in the arena because you're not worried about losing the rewards that you should have gained or have earned or whatever you want to call it. And I think that would help with the battle arenas because you have less people stopping <laughs> when they reach the threshold because there's no incentive to keep trying. And I hope that that makes sense because in the battle arena, 250 trophies is quite a bit. I mean, let's be real. So if you're at 4750, you feel like that is about your max. Like getting another 250 doesn't seem the risk reward isn't there. Whereas with my system, if you get the max, what whatever your highest was, if you get rewarded for that, then there's incentive to keep trying to go that next threshold and you can keep battling and keep playing and you might get lucky. Maybe your team is better than you thought and you are able to progress. But it helps everybody find games and it doesn't penalize you for playing late in the season. That's my idea. And then whenever the next season starts, everybody just gets reset their tournament rankings. Now, you are going to have the people who will say, well, then you could just tank and win a bunch. And Pokemon Duel is a game that I used to play and it had a very similar battle system. And what they did is they just basically said, if you tank at the end of one season, or if you tank leading up to another season, that, ooh, that you're not eligible for awards come the next tournament season. And I feel like that pretty much put an end to most of the tanking. So I think there are ways around that. And um, I mean, as long as everybody knows that going into the season, that if you're going to tank, you're not gonna be eligible for any prizes. I think it's a good battle system, but I mean, that's that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Definitely need this Dilophosaurus. It's a beautiful day in Southern California. It's like 60 degrees. That's why I'm wearing long sleeves, but I don't need the nun to suit this. I'm probably gonna head over there and finish off. Can I get a 30 here? Doubtful. What? A 40? Nice. I mean, I still need 80. It's possible. Nice. Now I only need 50. I'm gonna go finish off that strike tower. I'm going to walk around, try to get some more Dilophosaurus Gen 2, but let me know in the comments below. What do you think of my proposed battle system? And do you stop playing arena battles once you reach a threshold that you feel is close to your max? That's all I've got for today. First video back, this should be the beginning of regular videos once again and feels good to be back so happy new year to every one of you and until next time